Good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to the place to be each and every Sunday night. We're tonight on Top Split TV. We're bringing you season 24, round five from Road Atlanta of the Sunday Night Lights. I'm Alex McKellar, and joining me, as always, is the chaotic one himself, Mr. Corey Steinhauser. Corey, big night of racing here again from Road Atlanta, the short layout this time. That's right, Alex. It's a different layout to what we're used to. We've been seeing the uh, longer layout um, mostly in the previous seasons, but the shorter layout does have its own little difficulties and quirks about it that I think will make the racing tonight just as electric as what we usually see from the longer vari uh, variety of the track here. And with a 44.05 strength of field, no one massively outnumbering anyone else as far as I rating goes here tonight as well. I reckon we could be in for a really close race here. Yeah, absolutely, mate. I think the uh, the nature of the track and uh, the nature of the drivers is going to make it very interesting here tonight. It could go one one of a few ways, tight and close throughout, or dare I say, pockets of excitement spread amongst the field. But after series leader Martin Luchetta has not backed up after the warm up race, the number one car here tonight is Red Face Racing's Julian O'Frey. So Julian taking the the number one seeded. Uh, position here tonight, but we're not without Mivano Sim Racing at, uh, at all. After we had three last week, we've got Ludwig Gidi backing up as the number two plated car. Now, fresh after his podium finish, the three plated car here tonight is Gol Kawabe, the Japanese driver looking to bank on uh, some additional success from last week. Uh, Dennis Johansson, the other great Dane joins us once again it's been a while since we've seen a dennis uh but johansson definitely has pace to burn on his night and giuseppe tolini uh from italy he joins us as the fifth seater car Corey. that's right alex and coming up as a sixth plate of car we got danny blanco we usually see up towards the pointy end of the field and he'll be looking for some more good results here tonight uh we also have raz vori uh, Vuar? I'm going to go Viori. Um, Viori. Let's go with Viori. that. Alright, we'll go Viori uh, from Finland. Uh, we got Oz and Zed's Corey Lean uh, representing Team Milo up there. Oh, actually, no, he's not a Team Milo car. Mind me, I'm an idiot. Uh, up as the eighth played car here tonight, we've got Ollie Peacock making a return. We haven't seen that name for a while. Alex from UK and I as the ninth played car. And coming up as the tenth played car is uh, Danny Carvajal from Iberia. Excellent. Let's run through the second half of the field. Nathan Wade from UK and I joins us once again. Donald Sabinal. There is your Milo Racing for tonight. He's in 12th, at least as far as the seedings go. 13th is Pablo Salvador. Uh, 14th seeded driver, George Maddock. 15th tonight, Hawk and Grebstad, the Norwegian driver for Speedy Snails, joins us again here tonight and i think that just about rounds out our field as we focus on the closing stages of quali uh top of the times provisionally is ludwig Gidi, of course at the moment he's uh it's about two tenths clear although he's just been done by danny blanco completing his second flying lap peacock it was always strong in quali topping the times at the moment lean only managing to sink down to fifth at this stage viori uh, who won the warm-up race, looking to do similar here for the second race. Hawken Grebstad, the Speedy Snails driver, comes up the hill through the final corner now. Through turn 11 and 12, we haven't renamed the corners here uh, in the shorter layout. We just uh, stick with the ones that we've got. Now, Grebstad, only managing to improve his time slightly. Uh, anyway, Kawabe san He's going to follow suit. He was in 16th, and he jumps right up. Where did he go? Only to 12th, though, uh, which is not where he wanted to be. Giddy's on a warm down lap. Just trying to see if there's anyone left there. We've got Fulgurini and Wade left out there, Corey. The last two drivers waiting to set their second time. Yeah, that's right, Alex. Uh, Fulgurini from Italy is 16th played the car. Uh, one of the guys that you missed, the other one is Zaber Sanchez. Or Xavier Sanchez from Iberia is a 17th plated car. A uh, couple of names that we haven't seen for a while. Xavier actually up in P8 as far as the qualifying uh, times go. But how is that pole time, Alex? There's only about 
23 hundredths between Ollie Peacock and Ludwig Giedi there, separating them for the pole. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we'd like to see. Peacock has outstanding qualifying pace invariably. He's weighed goes top five on the timesheets as Forgiorini crosses the line to round us out and manages to grab ninth. As Quali finishes, we might just go through the grid. Holly Peacock for UK and I continues. Uh, his, or lives up to his reputation as a strong qualifier. Uh, he's put it on pole for tonight, the UK and I driver. Ludwig Geedy from Ivana Sim Racing just uh, beside him on the front row, some 23 hundreds behind. Pablo Salvador from Iberia in his first outing for Sunday Night Lights. He's uh, starting in third tonight. Julian O'Frey, the red-faced racer, joins him on the second row of the grid in fourth. Fifth starting position tonight will be Nathan Wade for UK and I. Closely behind him, Danny Blanco from Iberia. In sixth, seventh will be Russ Vuori from Finland. I think we've seen Russ before. We certainly saw him in the warm-up race and he did well there. So watch uh, the Finnish driver going forward. P8 off the grid tonight, George Maddock from UK and I. P9, Daniel Forgiarini from Italy. Xavier Sanchez, the Iberian, out of 10th. Corey Lean, the leading ANZ driver once again, starting from 11th. Dennis Johansson, the Norwegian driver, returning once again. He's in 12th off the grid as we go over the page to see... 13th off the grid, Giuseppe Tolini, the Italian. Japanese driver, Gol Kawabe, going to be tough to back up his last week's podium in 14th. Position off the grid, 15th, is Team Molo's Donald Savanol. Followed by, uh, it says Luminos Racing, was actually Speedy Snails, Hawk and Grebstad out of 16th, and Danny Carvial. So I'm going to say that. The Iberian out of 17th off the grid as we get ready to go racing here tonight. We've got 22 laps from memory here tonight of the short and loud of Road Atlanta as the red lights mean rev. And Fred, the flag marshal, vigorously waves his green flag to set them away as the run down to turn one commences. We have Peacock leading them away, Corey. It was a very defensive Peacock there going into turn one. The top three, Peacock, Gidi and Salvador, all going over to that right side of the track, wanting to give each other much room there as we all file up into turns uh, two and three now. And for the moment, it looks like everyone is holding on. I see a little bit uh, from George Maddock just mounting the curb there a little bit in the 14-plated car. So far, so good, Alex. It looks like everyone has survived the early parts of lap number one. So hopefully we can have all 17 cars still running at the end and make this an absolute cracking race. Yeah, top to tail, they're covered by less than five seconds as they go too wide into the braking zone at 10 A and B. This is where you'll see your race decided here at some stage tonight. Uh, and they started early as two by two, and they seem to all be so well behaved to get through as we see Kawabe now looking to put the move and Sabanar briefly making it three wide as they settle back down. It's only lap one, boys. Keep it together as across the line, our leaders go, led by Geedy, with who's managed to uh, jump the pole sitter. And O'Frey looking to make a move now, is he? Gets it past Salvador. But Salvador have the run into two, but O'Frey will have the run into three. This blind, cresting right-hander, and he managed to get it done. Well played, everyone there. Blanco shooting up the order briefly. Uh, Danny looking to... Uh, Snare would put what would be his third SNL victory if he manages to push it up from fifth, Corey. He very well has the skill to be able to try and make that a reality there, Alex. But what I'm surprised is that uh, there's not many people taking a very wide line there coming out of three. Normally you see those cones getting scattered absolutely every single lap, but everyone really trying to keep it within the limits. Do you think maybe the uh, the 1X that they get if they take the grass there is scaring them into three. just taking it easy here the first few laps three wide into the court into the chicane if you don't mind and it is the 14 of george maddock who comes out in front behind left in his wake was grips and Toledi. sorry Corey, you're right they, these uh laps could be cone killers that's for sure but these boys down the back i tell you what they're getting right into it. Meanwhile, up the front, they're looking to go two by two as O'Frey, looking to make his claim on the podium positions as he goes two wide briefly. Geedy settles in behind for third, and it's O'Frey, the big mover in the front pack. It's only up two positions, but it's two hard four positions at this stage, Corey. 
Yeah, that's right, Alex. And you know, when you're right at the front of the pack battling in like this, you know, especially on such a short track, it is very easy for these guys to make mistakes. But it looks like, for the most part, everyone mitigating their mistakes and not really making too much of it. Danny Blanco trying to hold on to that P4 from Salvador right now as they're coming down into 10A and B. And it looks like Salvador, the inside line, almost took the advantage. It became Danny Blanco's advantage there coming out of 10B, having the inside line, Alex. Yeah, and that's how breakaways are formed. Uh, they're seven tenths behind. Two by two through the chicane is not how you go fast. And that look at that gap already. It's uh, up to 0.7. Oh, it's coming back down now. It's the leaders go two by two. So Frey says it's time for me to lead this one, folks. Oh, who's that running wide in the background? It's the seven car of Viore, the race winner for the warm-up race here tonight and he's getting shuffled back down the order now the big boys are out to play O'Frey leading away definitely wanting to take this one out and take it by the neck so to speak in the early stages again the biggest mover in that front pack up three positions to take the lead at this stage Corey and that's right Alex and I've just been looking uh, through the field here a little bit and the eighth plated car Corey Lean Oz and Zed's own and Dennis Johansson DJ himself have been slowly and steadily making their way through the field as well. It looks like DJ is kind of using Corey as a little bit of a, uh, a guide getting through the traffic here. With those drivers up four positions since the start of this race. Yeah, and looking to make it more as they, he moves alongside Nathan Wade in the 11 car, does Corey Lean. Very much known for his aggression in the early parts of races. Likes to get to the front, similar to what O'Frey's doing, but he's got further to travel from where he started, but already up five positions now as he goes and makes P6 his own this time round. And again, Johansson follows him through. It's a two for one, and we see, in fact, a three for one as Fulgurini now battling with Wade to get through and gets it done as well. And the seven-plated car, Viori, looking to put pressure all over Wade this time round. Wade has dropped four positions in the blink of an eye. I'm talking about four corners, four in four. That's not what he was looking for, Corey. No, indeed it wasn't, Alex, but while I was focusing on Corey Lean and DJ there, uh, going up into two and three, I saw our leaders, uh, Peacock, Giddy, and Ofrey going three wide. Peacock taking the advantage of it and has retaken the lead as they come down into 10 A and B this time, and it looks like he's going to be unchallenged, but there is a send from the back there from Salvador trying to defend against Lean going into 10 A that time, Alex. Lean looking to get the better drive out. I hear crunching in the background, but no one dropping down the order. As Sabanel set the fastest lap, but he's sitting in last place at the moment. But uh, the, we have a mega pack, although Ford trying to get away here. We see Johansson go up, Salvador gets that spot back by the looks. Can Lean and Johansson in this mid pack mayhem look to get back onto the, the front pack? I think they can. They're about, what's that, about half a second only behind the leaders now uh, as Corey Lean. Like I said, at the start of these races, he's got some aggression and he's made his way up six positions now. He's bringing along Johansson for the ride uh, and these two really looking to get amongst it in the front ones, in the front pack there, Corey. Yeah, that's right, Alex. And it looks like uh, Johansson really just playing the smart game here, just following Corey Lean every time he opened up a gap there. It looks like this time, Dennis... And take that position away from Lean, and Lean might actually lose another position here to Salvador. Salvador trying Whoa. to go, oh, a little bit of a net code contact there. And that has not worked out for those guys behind Alex. That was a massive net code. Let's, uh, let's go see if we can't grab that again. You can see Lean and uh, uh, the 13 car of uh, Salvador virtually coming together. There was no real contact, and there's nowhere to go for the cars behind and they've all just absolutely come a cropper there in a skippy, well, it's a double deck. It's almost like a skippy Big Mac there. There's so many cars and meat in the sandwich, as it were. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately for those guys, that's uh, that's all she wrote. As we jump back up front, we uh, have a thinned out lead pack, but still action aplenty as Geedy now stamping his authority. And O'Frey, our early lead, has been shuffled back. Uh, Johansson is... is on the back and it's lean now who's fighting to get through after he was oh look at the brakes on your hands it gets right on the back into 10a and 10b and he's right amongst it question is can lean go with him uh, as your hansen now having set the fastest lap last time round with a one six even Corey. 
was not going to be as easy for Lean as it is for Johansson. Johansson, as we both know, Alex, is pound for pound one of the uh, better skippy drivers on iRacing who come and uh, race with us here on a Sunday night. And uh, Corey Lean, as, as aggressive as he is... Oh, three uh, wide into three, if you don't mind, Corey. Sorry, mate. Oh, they that, managed that to get it sorted. Okay, but they got it sorted. You guys have been going absolutely nuts. But they brought, uh, they brought Lean right back into it, and that's the only invitation he needed. But we got an ANZ driver in the front pack, Corey. Hopefully he can keep a hold of it, Alex. As I was going to say... You know, he does have that aggressive when he's right up in the pack, but when he's in a chasing situation like this, he seems to uh, just falter a little bit, make some little uh, minute mistakes that just really hold him up. As it looks like we've got a battle for the lead, and it's going to be Giddy coming into the lead this time. Oh, that was close for Johansson. Looks like he's going to get shuffled out and back to the back of this pack now, Alex. That was synchronized fly. It was like a squadron of of uh, fighter pilots doing uh, acrobatics there. They had two, one, two. It was magnificent to watch. There's three wide now. They go through turn one. Can they get it done? Very tough for Gidi who backs out. And he's going to come under threat now from O'Fray. Where do you look? You can, oh, go Hanson tries to chuck it up. The inside lead says, no, thank you. I'll have that line there. And it, uh, still, astoundingly, somehow they got it through single file through three there, Corey. What a race. The, the skill that's on display from these top drivers, Alex, is just absolutely nuts. I mean, these guys are on the verge of crashing every single corner right now. And somehow they're just making it through like it's just a Sunday drive. I guess it is a Sunday night lights. So uh, that does, you know, stand to reason. But these guys, the show that they're putting on right now is just absolutely crazy. And I, I don't know how they haven't crashed in this front pack yet, Alex. Unbelievable. The exit of turn five onto the back straight. The back three of this pack are dead set queuing up to go three wide each and every time. They just want to shuffle and move forward in this pack. And it is finally now the Piper coming to get paid as we see Johansson once again. Chark it up the inside of turn one. He gets past Giddy of all people, who's second in the championship overall. And one of the best drivers going around, just getting shuffled back in this aggressive front pack at the moment, Corey. Yeah, that's right, Alex. And now I'm going to take a little squiz just behind these guys for a little bit. Up nine positions from the start of this race, sitting in P7 is number 15 of Mr. Hawk and Grebstad. What an incredible run he has had so far. He's got Tolini sitting right there behind him, who similarly is up five positions from the start of this race. So uh, that big crash that happened there in 10A and 10B really worked to the advantage of these two drivers. Yeah, absolutely. Is the front pack. They're going two by two in the, what is trying very hard to become a second pack uh, as this front six uh, continue to string out. We've got Grebstad and Tolini, as you say, with Kawabe, followed by Maddock and, uh, Maddock and uh, Carvial. Strung out like Brown's cows a little bit behind them. Up six places is Carvial with Sabanal right on his on his tail, the lone Team Milo driver up three positions. But up front is where the action is tonight, that's for sure. Three looking to get away. They're about 1.1 seconds ahead. Johansson fighting off Lean and Geedy at the same time as he's desperately trying to claw back into the draft of O'Fray, who's sitting on the back of this first pack, Corey, as they sweep around five. Turns right here in the shorter layout. It's challenging both ways. Whoa, as we see oh. in the background, that's Lean go round. I'm not sure what happened there, Corey. Did you, did you catch it? Oh, I did, Alex. It looked like uh, Ludwig Geedy. Not wanting to ruin any of his uh, momentum there. Stuck in the throttle and just straight up turned him, Alex. Oh, I'm just catching it on replay now. It is... Oh, look, I haven't seen it quite yet, but yeah, there it is. He's just driven straight through the back of him. Oh, that's tragic for the, uh, the ANZ driver there. Absolutely turned. I bet he is fully spewing after that. Uh, and that really leaves us now with a front pack of four. You've got Johansson and Geedy still in it, but only just hanging on to the draft at this stage, Corey. Yeah, that's right, Alex. And it's not going to be easy now for these guys to try and stay in with it. 
mean, they are there or thereabouts, just right on the tail end of that draft. But um, but without that third person, it really hinders their ability to try and catch up to that draft using their own draft. It's going to be interesting to see what Giddy and Johansson can do here because they are two of the better skippy drivers in this field. And, uh, you know, if anyone can do it, it's going to be these two. But with just 11 laps, in fact, nearly 10 laps to go, it's just not going to be easy for these guys. Nah, both uh, the front three and the second two starting to work together. We saw Peacock and Blanco uh, leapfrog there and O'Frey sit behind them and uh, lead them to their own devices. And then we saw Johansson and Geedy leapfrog successfully as well. So it is now uh, a battle of the mind as much as anything else. They are 1.3, so they're losing time, the second two of Geedy and O'Frey. But we know geedy has got the pace to get back on, given half a chance, just whether he gets that chance. Grebstead and Tolini now battling hard for 6th and 7th, respectively. Grebstead, as you say, up 10 positions still, as we see Maddock starting to get a bit of a gap there from Kawabe, and Kawabe and Carvial, uh again, strung out a bit here tonight, with Sabanal now well and truly in the battle, I should say, with... Um, with Carvial, is that a lapped car or is that Carvial? I can't see the number and I'm not familiar with the livery, Corey. Is that a battle or is that a lap car? I'm going to say it's a uh, battle, judging by the, the time. Yeah, that, that, that's a battle between Carvial and Savanel there. Um, up ahead about four seconds is Paul Garini, who is a lap down, though. Ah, that would be what I got caught out by. Lee now on a recovery drive. Uh, he was up so many, he's now down one, sitting just inside the SNL points. Uh, in 12th. As we jump back, check in on our leaders. How's that gap going? It's 1.5. So they lost two tenths uh, last lap, did Geedy and Johansson. Uh, and this front three sitting behind Peacock with Blanco and O'Frey could be the ones to watch. Uh, it'll just be a matter at this stage if they keep going. Who finishes on what step of the podium, Corey? Um, so that's one. That's going to be a hard one to predict here, Alex, because... Uh no, all three of these drivers have a lot of pace around here. Obviously, with Peacock being the pole sitter. And uh, O'Frey, he's in some stellar form right now. So it's going to be hard. But I'm going to say that the order might not change for our top three here. I reckon it's going to be Peacock, Blanco, O'Frey in that order. Yeah, it could well be. And again, the gaps continue to grow out to 1.6 seconds this time round. As we see the drivers go through, uh, they're into the 105s, which is about where you want to be at this stage of the race, the mid to high 105s. That time around, Geedy setting uh, the best time of the lead five uh, with a 105.7, but only a tenth quicker than the drivers in front. And you can see that reflected in the, in the interval there. It's about 1.5 or tucked into 1.4 briefly uh, as the lead packs trade sector times through this shortened layout at Road Atlanta, Corey. Uh, it's just, we've, it looks like we've reached the uh, part of the race right now, Alex, where everything's just calmed down. Everyone's just trying to make it to the end of the race now. Uh, no one's really putting in any super stellar lap times, although you can see that uh, Hawk and Grebsad and Tolini have been consistently going faster and our leading pack here. So uh, it looks like maybe these guys at the front just really come off the pedal there a little bit and just trying to relax a little bit for uh, maybe the next couple of laps before uh, we get to the end of this race, Alex. Yeah, best lap of the race set by Julian O'Frey there with a 105.6 uh, with a double draft of the leading pair of Peacock and Blanco to bring him around. No surprises there, but now that gap for Keaty and Johansson absolutely being gapped by these guys. It's now close to two seconds on the approach to turn three that time round. It's starting to tighten up a bit now, but with a 105.6, uh, Geedy and Johansson, the best of them was really only a 106 dead by Johansson last lap. They are being gapped, and they are fighting for scraps at this stage as the front three drive away with it. Grabs that and Tolini. Now they're holding their own against Maddock and Kawabe. Uh, they are, yeah, look, they're kind of line astern and just doing their thing at the moment. Sabanel racing his own race with Carvial now. Uh, he's dropped down. I didn't see what happened to him. Uh, with Corey Lean now looking to salvage what he can. 
I'm sure he's got his sights on Carvial and Sabanal to boot Corey. Oh, indeed he will, Alex, because he will not be happy about what uh, Gidi did to him there in that uh, long sweeping turn five. And uh, from what I heard on Radio Chatter, this isn't the first time that they've had a coming together in recent weeks. So uh, maybe a little bit of bad blood there between the two. Yeah, well, of course, last week at the shorter layer of, layout of Hockenheim, uh, Gidi got uh, the right uh, outside tyres onto the grass to the uh, twisting infield section. And, yeah, Fed Income uh, launched Corey into uh, another stratosphere briefly, although Corey did fight, Lean did fight back for uh, P3 in that race. But, yeah, two weeks in a row, uh, an unfortunate one there. I couldn't see entirely whether there was net code involved in it this week, but uh, certainly a mistake last week. And uh, the nature of internet racing, you'd probably like to think that... Uh, smarter heads would prevail and the the smaller the gap the the bigger the risk that you run when it comes to net code and that was certainly a very small gap Corey. indeed it was alex but uh you know we, we know a few of these guys quite well and uh sometimes the level-headedness doesn't really come to fruition as much as we would like with a few of them but uh that's also just the entertainment of motorsports in itself Get your fiery hot heads and uh they definitely let you know who they are and quite often uh you never really see anything like that out of Gidi. Uh, as aggressive as he is he's not usually one to uh take drastic action like that but uh you know he's still holding on to that p5 right now and Corey lean is all the way down in 11th still alex yeah of course Gidi's had plenty of real life experience in open wheel racing uh, knows what he's doing and how to steer, of course. And, but mistakes happen, uh, and these things, uh, you know, they do happen, and people uh, live to fight another day, hopefully. Corey Lean now on the back of the fastest lap of the 105.6, looking to go past Team Milo's Sabanal, and in ahead of them, you, now we've got a four-way battle. This is where we've got uh, Kawabe Matic, uh, Grebstad and Tallini in this four-way battle. Looking to get amongst it with just the three laps to go as they cross the line, Corey. That's right, Alex. It looks like we're definitely starting to get the uh, hashtag pockets of excitement going right now. As uh, at the moment, I have Grebstad trying to look for a way around Tallini, trying to get to that outside for turn two so he could be on the inside for turn three. Couldn't quite get there this time. Tallini... Uh, doing some really great defensive work here. It also looks like Matic has a little bit of damage on his rear wing there, Alex. Yeah, sure does. The 14 not quite as straight as it was when the, we started here tonight. Once again, Kawabe is showing patience sitting here at the back of this group as they fan out once again. Grebstad likes to be on the front of these groups, uh, knows he's got good pace and likes to use it as he goes side by side with Tolini this time round into 10A. Gets it done through into 10A. Can he get the drive out of 10B? They'll all have to lift a fraction because of the compromised line. But, gee, that was a good drive there on exit for the Norwegian Hawk and Grebstad there. As we go back and check on our leaders, O'Frey once again wrestling the fastest lap of the race back from Corey Lean with a 105.5. First to dip in there, although I do note that uh, Blanco's was a 105.4, but must have had a 1X because it's not legitimate. Peacock, Blanco, and O'Frey continue to lead this one. Johansson and Geedy now, some three and a half seconds. They have dead set been dropped, which is remarkable. Uh, as we see, the, the next pocket of excitement is the four cars of Grebstad, Tolini, Maddock, and Kawabe battling it out to close this one out, Corey. That's right, Alex. And uh, it's definitely turned into one of those pockets of excitement kind of races. As much as we would have loved to, to have stayed a big group the entire race, uh, we probably knew deep down inside that wasn't going to happen around here. But, uh, you know, that front pack still battling it out, though, as we only have about two laps to go now as they come across the start-finish line. So this is the time where Blanco and O'Frey are going to have to start looking to make moves, O'Frey especially, because you don't want to be stuck there as a third-place car coming into the final lap, especially not with uh, how small that straightaway is coming into 10A and 10B with the uh, smaller configuration, Alex. Yeah, it's a lot more risk versus reward when you come into 10A and B out of turn five uh, in this shorter layout. You can normally bank on being in P3 and cracking it for P3 
P1 by the time you hit the chicane, but not in this shorter layout as the guy's heading up the hill now through five on the exit onto the back straight, straight into turn nine <laughs> with the shorter layout. Uh, this time they're going to go two and maybe three wide, are they? No, O'Frey continues to pull in behind as we see Blanco and Peacock go side by side. The rear of O'Frey's car can tell you how hard he's trying. Meanwhile, behind, you've got Johansson now winning that battle between he and Gidi, although I would suggest that one will play out on the final lap, as will this one here. As Fred, the flag marshal, once again vigorously waves his white flag. What are they going to do? Two by two here. Blanco and Peacock. Peacock and Blanco. It is Blanco through turn one, but will it be Peacock through two and then Blanco through three? What's O'Frey doing? Through three they go, the blind cresting right-hander, and it is side-by-side -side still through there. Amazing stuff with Peacock coming out on top. But what strategy will come into play here as we run up the hill for through turn five for the final time, led by the nine car of Ollie Peacock. What's O'Frey got for the pair in front of him now with Blanco and Peacock leading it out? O'Frey's all over the back of Blanco this time round. They're going to go three wide. Absolutely they are. O'Frey, it'll be on the outside though. It'll be Blanco with the drive. Peacock pulls out of it. He's looking for the drive on exit to come underneath. He gets underneath O'Frey. He's got the drive. Will he get the drive? Blanco covers the line, though. He's going to make uh, Peacock go the long way around. O'Frey looking to cut underneath Peacock through the final quarter. Can't get it done. It'll be Blanco. Blanco from Peacock and O'Frey. Magic finish for that one. Johansson joins uh, Sunday Night Lights again. He's... Uh, First and best finish for a while here is Grebstad. Grebstad wins that secondary battle pack there, Corey. What a finish to that one. Great driving. Could I tell you the, the strategy and the tactics there as well as the skill through that final chicane worth the price of admission alone? I definitely was, Alex. And I knew that Frey was probably going to try and go for that move, make it three wide. But uh, I just knew deep down inside that it wasn't going to work for him. And uh, the results of that show with him coming in P3. But, uh, you know, good on all three of those guys for putting on a show the entire race and uh, managing to not run into each other for the entire race too. Because uh, it was definitely a lot of close, hard, fast racing. I think as uh, Carviel has just crossed the start-finish line, that is the complete end of the race. Everyone has finished now, Alex. Yeah, I'm going to check out the view from uh, from these guys. Absolutely amazing. So we're on board here with Peacock, and you can see there's cars to the left and the right. of He backs out of it, lets them go all the while. He's setting, trying to set up the run on the exit of 10B. So he's compromised 10A. Look at him. The much earlier turn, and he's on the racing line. The other two spraying out to the right as they wash off speed. And now, look, he cuts back. On the racing line again, look at the sort of drive that he gets out of this corner. That was his tactic the whole way through that final series. Then you'll see Blanco come across to cover the inside line where his drive was. Afraid not having the speed out of 10B means he cannot cover Blanco. Sorry, cannot cover Peacock as he continues his run side by side. And if we come back with Afray, you can see he just couldn't cover it off. He didn't have the speed. And then all he has to do is watch as Blanco and Peacock fight it out through the final corner. But he himself looks to set up the inside run here to go up the inside of Peacock if he can. Fantastic to see such great strategy played out, even such a short space on the track. And it was Blanco who ended up getting it done across the line, as we see here as they finish it out. Fantastic series of corners, fantastic exhibition of what strategy is like uh, in the final stages of a race from some of the top class drivers. Fantastic work and, uh, and really uh, great to watch. Now, let's check out our uh, race results here. If I can just find the box. There it is for round five of season 24 from Road Atlanta of Sunday Night Lights. We had Danny Blanco taking out what I believe is his third victory here on a Sunday night uh, from Iberia. Congratulations to Blanco. Ollie Peacock made a successful return here. Started on pole, finished in second in that spectacular finish. Julian O'Frey. The uh, Red Face Racer uh, continues his run of good form, finishing third on the podium. Welcome return for Dennis Johansson 
in P4. P5, just behind him, was Ludwig Giedi, who I would suggest on the back of that may jump his teammate, who did not show tonight, uh, series leader Manu Luketa. Uh, it will be Ludwig Giedi, the other Mavano Sim racer, uh, jumping him to the top of the pops back on the back of that P5 finish. Hawk on Grebstad, fantastic drive through the field. The biggest mover and shaker in the field, up 10 positions, if you don't mind. Uh, to finish in sixth. Giuseppe Tolini, the Italian, in seventh. Gol Kawabe, uh, second last week. It only managed eighth this week, but he was also up six positions, as was Tolini in front of him. George Maddock from UK and I in ninth. Corey Lean, after that unfortunate incident with Gidi, uh fought his way back to be the leading ANZ driver in P10, just ahead of his uh, Team Milo uh, compatriot, uh, in the ANZ club, Donald Savanal in 11th. Ras Vuori won the warm-up race here. The finished driver was only able to finish 12th here tonight in the big one. Nathan Wade from UK and I made his return to finish 13th. In his debut, Pablo Salvador from Iberia managed 14th. Danny Carvial from Iberia in 15th. Danielle Fulgiarini from Italy in 16th. And Xavier Sanchez all the way down in 17th tonight for the Iberian driver, Corey. That, could I tell you, as much as it was, you know, it sort of had that lull in the middle of the race, I was really pleased to see how that the end of that race played out there, mate. Really uh, showed what Skippy Racing, or at least another form of Skippy Racing, can be all about. Well, that's exactly right, Alex. And, you know, the drivers that we have on display here tonight uh, some of the best that are, you know, in the online racing world. And they definitely showed that you know, the skills that they have here can easily be translated over into a real life race situation. And they could put on some absolute cracking racing as soon as they get over the whole fact of they're not just sitting still. There's a bit of G force in it. But, uh, you know, the racing that we have on display here is just as good as, if not better than something that we'd probably see in real life just because of the sheer uh, amount that these guys are willing to risk to uh, try and get that win. And the fact that they did it all without making contact and all three of them making it to the end completely with okay cars is, you know, just another milestone in itself, Alex. Yeah, absolutely. Fair pump to Blanco too. He's up five positions to get there as we're focusing on him, him at the start of the race. And the five guys in front of him who had to get past to get there. Fair drive. Similarly for Johansson, who was up eight spots. So a couple of, a few uh, really strong performances out there tonight as we look to have the first of our uh, interviews here tonight. We have once again Redface Racing's Julian O'Fray. Julian, uh, it was epic at the front there uh, for, well, really, uh, for the first half of the race. In the middle half of the race, it was a bit more controlled. And then, can I tell you, I really, really enjoyed the way the final few corners played out, the strategy and the skill. How was it for you out there on track? Um, it's uh, it's uh, really, uh, the, the, the first laps was, uh, was really uh, fun. Um, I know I, I was uh, too slow, too slow. Um, to to do something. Uh, what what what? Um, one second. Yeah. Okay. I was too. Uh, I'm too slow to to win here. So I just want to 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 try to push uh, people to to fold uh, at the start. This is why to why to rewrite uh, etc. And. Uh, after that, um, the rest was a bit boring. Uh, I, I tried to, to cut the, the draft uh, with, uh, with Bian, which uh, was a, a success. Uh, and after that, I just follow uh, and wait uh, the final, final lap. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'm just wondering if uh, your push at the at the start of the race so you started in fourth you pushed your way forward to first was that uh, was that to counter what you thought was uh, your lack of pace here you thought you'd get in front and see how you went uh, excuse me can you repeat you might be uh, yeah. so hard to, uh, I... <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's all right I, I was just wondering if your push to lead early was a result of you feeling that you didn't have the pace to win 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It uh, it was because of this. Uh, I just want to to try to to push each uh, other driver to to battle, uh, and when they battle, uh, of, often they, they they do mistake, and uh, and they lose uh, some position sometimes. And just after, uh, I can follow a fast driver and uh, and uh, and go away. Yeah, absolutely. Legit strategy here, of course, in big pack racing where it's hard to differentiate and it certainly paid off for you here tonight, Julian. So congratulations. Is there anyone you'd like to say thank you to or shout out to before we let you go? I want to thank uh, Oli for this uh, great place. Uh, I just had uh, to, <laughs> to follow him all race long. <laughs> <laughs> and you, and you for uh, for your uh, your amazing job like uh, like every week. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Thank you, uh, Julian. It's a pleasure to have you as always, uh, and thank you for joining us. And hopefully, we'll see you in the coming weeks. Um, maybe not. I, I don't know. Yeah, we, we will see. <laughs> awesome. See you. Right. Bye. Thanks, Julian. Bye bye. There you go, Corey, uh, Red Face Racing's Julian O'Fray. Uh, great to see the Frenchman out there once again. Um, we may or may not see him in the coming weeks by the sound of it, but uh, interesting he talked about the strategy there, and I've seen it before where someone who doesn't think they have the pace tries to sort of mix it up and disrupt uh, you know, it, it disrupt the speed, I guess, uh, and the rhythm of some of the other drivers in there to the, to sort of, sort of try and gain an advantage from it. Quite an interesting approach. Yeah, that's right, Alex. And, uh, you know, he had a lot of pressure on him in this race, being the number one car. It's, you know, not very often that we see Julian carrying the number one in our races. Uh, I think, you know, he, he was subconsciously putting just that little bit more pressure on himself to try and perform without taking himself out of the race, which uh, could have led to his little bit of a downfall there at the very end of the race. But at the end of the day, it was still a very great race for all three of those drivers. And if Julian's still up there on the podium, he should be absolutely wrapped with that. Yeah, 100%. Uh, but of course, tonight, uh, Danny Blanco takes out another race here in, well, well, it really was a great drive, you know. Only qualified sixth, pushed forward into first. And then, as I said, that final series of corners really showed the skill and tactics uh, of all three in the front pack. And congratulations to Blanco. Go check him out, of course, on Twitch at DannyGas001. You can see him race firsthand. We got a few streamers in here tonight, uh, but Danny, of course, was the one who took top of the pops. But that, folks, might just about do us. Uh, Corey, tell the folks at home what you got coming up this week, eh? Uh, so this week, um, we're going to be a little bit of a weird week. I'm not really sure too much about what I've got going on. I do know for sure on Wednesday over on the Aussie Sim Commentator channel, twitch.tv forward slash Aussie underscore sim underscore commentator. Uh, there will be racing in the Output Racing League from the Kansas Speedway, which is always a great track to have racing at, especially for the trucks. Uh, on Friday, instead of NIS, because it's at a road course, I'll be doing some chat AI racing, uh, which is always a great fun. We'll be doing the Formula Vs on ovals this season, which is uh, quite interesting to see. I did a test race and they crash a lot more than I thought they were going to. And it's all back here again next week to do this all again with you at Sukova Circuit, Alex. Yeah, good times. Looking forward to it. Uh, of course, folks, you can catch all the uh, latest results and news on the Locked On iRacing podcast, including our ongoing coverage of Sunday Night Lights. Go check them out on your favourite podcatcher either on a Wednesday night for the news and results or for Sunday like tonight where they do their interview episode. But if you want to keep up with everything that's happening with Sunday Night Lights, go check out the Locked On iRacing podcast. Otherwise, for us folks, everything top split is on your screen as always. Join us in the Discord, which is where we not only do we do the broadcast and the post-race interviews, but everything Sunday Night Lights is there, the latest updates and happenings, uh, and the community is there supporting us. Uh, and of course, the Top Split YouTube is where you'll find the race replay for this and all the other 
MNL and SNL races throughout our 24 season history. And of course, Corey's and my uh, Twitch channels are on your screen there as well. Each and every Sunday night is where you find us here on Top Split TV. And as Corey said, plenty going on in his space as well. But for now, folks, make sure you hit like, subscribe, thumbs up, all those good things on those places. Uh, it really does help us tremendously. But otherwise, thank you for your ongoing support, both on track and off. As we always say, this, uh, this big thing is uh, for the community, by the community, and that's how we like it. And until next time, folks... On behalf of the chaotic one himself, Corey Steinhauser, I'm Alex McKellar, and I'll say ciao for now.